Hey everyone, Matt here with Mosif to show you how to track API calls by user ID in Node.js. So if you've followed along from our last tutorial of actually integrating Node.js with Mosif, you'll be familiar with the code that you see on the screen here. If not, you can check out that tutorial and that will give you this base code. Now what we've done here is just a very, very simple, you know, we've set up Mosif middleware, passed our application ID, and then have a single endpoint that's just slash test that returns a 200 with this is a response. What we want to do is actually start tracking this based on having a JWT passed with an ID field in it that we can actually attach to that API request. Right now, if you look in our most of dashboard, what we'll see is a bunch of calls to slash test, but we don't see a user actually being identified. So no user profile found, view track user setup is what it's gonna show. What we wanna see is an, a unique identifier here so that we can start leveraging user insights to see exactly how they're using APIs and, and what ones they're using. So let's hop back to VS Code here. What we want to do is first install, so npm install express dash JWT, so that's auth zeros express JWT library. We're, we'll bring that in. The next thing that we'll do is add that into our code. So const JWT equal to require, and we'll require our express JWT. All right, now our next step here is to actually use this JWT library I and mean, what we want to do is actually have the JWT filter be our first callback in our chain here. So if you're familiar with how um, get works from the express router, basically you can have almost, I think, an infinite amount of callbacks. And whenever someone calls slash test, it's gonna go to this function first, then it'll go to this second callback, and you could even put a third callback, but they're called in, in sequence. Now, you'll see that I've called JWT here. I've passed my secret, so this secret has to match the secret that is in my JWT or JOT, and then I need to make sure that the algorithm also matches um, whatever I'm using within that JWT. At this point, now if we were to save this, when we call slash test, you're going to see that because the JWT is not there and it can't be verified, if we don't have it in our request, it's going to deny permissions to this. So it's not necessarily a super secure way to do it because we're not we're only validating that the JWT is valid um, and, and matches the secret and algorithm. We're not actually going to use any identity provider to authenticate in order to give this JWT token. Now, the last thing that we're going to do here is make sure that we have added an identify user hook into our Mosif middleware. To do that, it's going to look like this. And this may already be in your code if you followed along with some of our other tutorials, but now you'll know how it works. So what we have here is identify user, which is the hook name that we need. That's the property name that we need. And then we can pass it a function where we can actually pull out a user ID that will be passed as an identifier to Mosif. Now when, when, JWT, when the JWT library runs here, it's actually going to extract this. It's basically the JOT's gonna have a user field or, or a user object associated with the, the payload coming through. And we're going to put an identifier in user.id. Now let me show you what that JWT looks like. Right now, it looks like this. So you can see that I have my algorithm as HS256, which actually matches the algorithm that we've put here. So we need to make sure that matches. And we also want to make sure that the type is JWT. Now you'll see here that what I've done is I've actually passed as part of this payload data, I've passed an ID here and that's one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, four. It can be whatever you'd like. Normally this JWT would be 
created through an identity provider, but if for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna dynamically create it here or manually create it. And then we need to make sure that our secret matches. So you can see that my shared secret that I have here also matches up to the one that I've supplied to the library here as part of my secret. Okay, now with that all being done, at this point we could start putting requests through and it's going to allow us to track that by user ID. Again, right now what we see is in Mosif, it's just a blank user right now. Now I'm gonna flip back over here. What we'll do is, is save this and then we'll run it. So node app.js, our server's running now. Now if I try to send a request through right now without a JWT on it, we're going to get this here, unauthorized error, no authorization token was found. What we need to do, if we're gonna use Postman for it, is do type of token as a bearer token. If I flip back here, I can grab my token, copy that, come back to Postman, paste the token here, and then I will send this request through again. So we'll do three of them. You can see now that what's happening is this JWT is being basically checked and what's happening, the most of middleware, once this JWT actually makes it through, it's actually going to call this identify user hook and you can see that it's gonna do request.user. If that request.user exists or, or data, then request.user.id. Now this, this is a convention that comes out of this JWT, express JWT package. So you can do lots of things here. You could pull this uh, out of the header. You could basically pull it out of any part of the request. This is just the standard that we like to follow um, because it's a bit of a convention at this point. Now, let's come back over to Mosif and see what we've got here. So we can see that we've got some new events, see latest, and look at that. Now, we actually have a user ID that's being attached to each of these requests. We can also see the 401 that we got um, when we requested without the JWT attached instead of the regular 200s that we're seeing here. And with that, now you have user tracking implemented on the server side of your API.